Thank you for joining us, folks. My name is Paul Pindell. I work for F5, and F5 has donated some of my time to the Open Programmable Infrastructure Project. Today, we're, uh, Derek, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, my name is Derek Miller. I work for ARM in our architecture and technology group, and I've been working in confidential computing for the last five years. Okay, great. So, I'm here representing the Open Programmable Infrastructure Project, OPI project, and you can get some information here on these QR codes. Uh, the, what we're doing in the OPI project is working with GPUs and creating a standards community-based driven uh, infrastru uh, overlay on those cards, a way to interact with those cards in a standardized way. And so a way to provision them, a way to make sure that the software that's running on them is proper, uh, a way to put uh, an operating system on them and those sorts of things. Part of what we've done is created a, a demo where we've run Nginx Plus on a DPU or an IPU. And you can see here that we've got uh, uh, traffic that comes in. Uh, we've made sure that it's run, there are VMs running on the host. Those VMs are secured by, uh, in this case, on this setup, was secured with TDX. Make sure that they're uh, proper VMs. We're running Nginx on the DPU. So a DPU has its own compute memory and storage in it, and we're running the Nginx on a Linux instance there. So what does that, what does that mean? We've got the ability to, uh, um, you see here that we've got, that we're provisioning it in a standard way from the management VLAN, and the Nginx proxy is the only way that traffic can get to those VMs. So we know the VMs are secure, and we know that they're as we want them to be. And as we're looking at the, the threat model, we're assuring that the software that's running on the host is secure, um, and there are confidential VMs, and the memory state is protected. What, we're, what it doesn't cover is what's happening on the DPU. It's essentially a server within the server itself. But in many cases, they don't have a confidential compute complex on them, a way to, to uh, in, ensure that they're, the, the software that's running on the DPU is, the DPU or IPU is uh, secure. So that's what we're here to talk about today. And so we, we don't yet have a full confidential compute story because that Nginx that's running on the card isn't, isn't trusted yet. So what, Mark, what we're gonna talk about here next is uh, what that means. Go ahead. Okay. So, um, so first the question comes up, what are DPUs used for? Um, in the existing environment, they provide network connectivity, including network security. Think about virtual private clouds. They basically provide a subnetwork. They can provide a subnetwork just for a particular user or customer. Uh, they also provide key management services. Um, and, they, and they provide remote storage abstraction, including encryption and decryption keys for the associated, uh, um, for the associated storage. They also provide accelerators for media, networking accelerators, and of course, uh, machine learning accelerators, which may be operating um, uh, models that were considerable, uh, there was considerable expense made to create them. So they are uh, typically, they can be of high value. So in sum, they basically, they can provide a platform for cloud service providers to enable services without using up valuable and billable main CPU resources. So that's wh where G DPUs are being used today. So what happens in the future when the host workload moves to confidential computing enclaves? And when I talk about these confidential computing enclaves, um, just to make sure that we're clear on a definition, uh, they provide uh, protection for a software stack from access or modifications from, by a hypervisor or any other software running on the host. They also provide memory encryption and authentication, but also, critically, they also need to support attestation. Examples of technology um, like this is uh, ARM's Confidential Compute Architecture, CCA, um, AMD SEV, which they've got multiple generations of, the latest of which is SNP, Intel TDX, and even Intel's older but still um, relevant Intel SGX. So what happens when that host workload moves to a confidential computing enclave? Uh, it kind of depends on why they moved into a confidential computing space, but if it's because they want to reduce their trust in the system operator, well, um, they're going to stop using the DPU resources because they have no way to be assured 
that they are providing the services that they claim to provide, that they're not exfiltrating the data, and they don't know anything about the environment that they're running on. And also, additionally, they can't, con can't trust the PCIe uh, port uh, connection that they have to the DPU. Um, again, because they don't trust the environment that they're operating under. So what does that mean for the, um, the workload that moved inside, inside the uh, enclave? It means that they have to duplicate the work that was done. They have to provide those services for themselves. If they want to use them, they have to implement their own key management. If they want to, um, uh, they can't use the accelerators that are available on the DPU. So generally, it's not great. So what happens when we add CC confidential computing capabilities back to the DPU? Um, well. They can attest, the confidential computing workloads on the CPU can attest to the DPU enclave. Also, the confidential computing workloads on the DPU can attest to the CPU enclave. And both of these can attest either together or separately to an external relying party. This external relying party who owns the resource secrets that are being kept on these. Uh, but trust here is kind of a tricky word. What does it mean? Well. For a confidential computing attestation, it means that you can trust that the software you are communicating with is operating within a trusted computing and technology, one that you uh, have previously accepted, CCA, AMD. And it also means that you get a, an assured measurement of the service being offered by, uh, uh, yeah, so you're, you're getting an assured measurement, a hash, of the software that's being running that's providing that service. However, you have to have that hash and you have to trust that hash. There's a couple of ways you can do that. Did you write the software yourself then you, and compiled it yourself? Then you can get the measurement and you can trust it. However, in a DPU use case, that may not be acceptable to the CSP, to the owner of the infrastructure. They are notoriously and rightfully a little paranoid about what the software that they're running on their stack. More likely, those services will be provided by the CSP and then they will provide a way for you to have assurance that the hash is what you think it is. You can audit the code, or uh, generally it's an audit, or if they, they may use something like um, uh, a ledger where you can see that they're giving you the same version that everyone else has. So there's lots of ways that this happens, uh, that this can happen. The way I would prefer it is I write it myself, but that's not always acceptable. So uh, what sort of technologies do we need to add for this? Actually, sorry, I had to establish the trust. Sorry about that. Uh, what technologies do we need for CC on D confidential computing on DPUs? Well, um, we need accelerators on those DPUs that can uh, be m can multi-tenant different applications securely. Because if they can't do that, then they won't be used. Um, we also need uh, TDISP and IDE, which is part of uh, PCIe. This basically it's needed to protect the PCIe channel between the host and the DPU. That's the IDE's part, but also um, we need that encryption there so that we can trust the measurements we get from TDISP. We also need uh, d device assignment, the ability to, to assign a PCIe virtual function to an enclave in a secure manner. And what often gets left out of this is we need attestation infrastructure. We need uh, this infrastructure to be able to understand aggregated enclave identities or be able to understand the um, technology behind the host to, to be able to verify attestation tokens from the host, verify attestation tokens from the DPU. And those two platforms, the host and the DPU, may be made by different manufacturers. They may be different ARM partners, for example, or one of them may be an AMD chip, one of them may be an Intel chip. So uh, the attestation infrastructure has to be cognizant of uh, all of these platforms and aware of the risks involved in using them and has to be able to make a decision, basically a yes or no, based on that. So the takeaways we have here is that host workloads are moving to confidential computing. Um, if you look at the space today, AWS has their Nitro enclaves. Azure is using, I can't recall the technology, I apologize, it's either Intel or AMD. Um, uh, Google is doing the same thing. So these workloads are moving, um, but if people are actually implementing confidential computing in a secure manner, they cannot use the existing DPU services. So the call, the call for action here is on the DPU hardware developers. You need to start integrating confidential computing features into your DPUs or your IPUs. 
software developers, you need to integrate attestation into your workflows. The first step on that is understanding attestation. There is a lot of misunderstanding about what attestation means in this space. And additionally, for um, OCP, standards developers, we need to make sure that the standards that we're developing uh, can work inside these confidential computing paradigms. We have one more. <clears throat> Last slide again. This is if you want to find out more information about uh, the work that we have done and want to see the demo that we've created, you can uh, snap some of these uh, QR codes. Or you can come by the ARM booth, B12. Uh, we'll be there today. We've got a section within the ARM booth. ARM has donated that to the OPI project. And we're showing these demos and, and several other demos running in the booth there. So thank you. Uh, I guess we have some time for yeah, questions. Yeah, we have some time for questions, yeah. We put it in uh, CCA terminology. Would a DPU be subject to uh, RME device assignment in, this, in the kind of scenario that you're talking about? In which case, the D, whatever the DPU is running will be an extension of the realm itself, right? Um, not necessarily, but yes, I would say uh, RME device assignment is, is required for this, but I would say it's not necessarily sufficient in that case. And that, the question comes up, kind of a question down to uh, when you do RME device assignment, you're relying heavily on IDE, PCI, I, PCIe's IDE, and also TDISP. And the question is when the platform, the DPU platform, delivers the measurements for TDISP, um, does it include all the stuff you need for that for, um, uh, does, it include, um, does, it, does it include the full software stack? on those measurements, or are they limiting themselves to just the firmware, in which case you may need to do the additional attestation on top of that. So uh, TDISP is necessary, but not necessarily sufficient. And uh, device assign RME device assignment relies heavily upon that. Okay. Thank you. So in your call to action slide, you talked about uh, harmonizing of the attestation protocols and possibly coming up with a combined set of att attestation evidence between uh, the host and the DPU. Mm -hmm. is, is that the proposal? And have you started work on that already? Um, Can we get involved? I would say the I would that's on this slide here where we talk about. Um, the need for attestation infrastructure to understand aggregated identity. Um, there are no standards being done in this area on these platforms. Everybody has their own uh, ways of doing it. Um, AMD has their own, Intel has two, I think, and ARM, we also have our own. Um, I don't think it's necessarily realistic to expect everybody to converge in this space because of the disparate requirements of their platforms. Um, ARMS has to be particularly flexible because we have to support lots of different partners. Um, Intel has particular privacy concerns that they worry about in these attestation protocols that are not as much of a concern for the other vendors. That's mostly a historical um, artifact from Intel being burned in the past. Um, uh, so agreeing on an attestation protocol or format for everyone is not very likely, but we can uh, work on services that can understand all of them. As an example, um, there's the Confidential Computing Consortium's project Verizon, which is um, maintained by ARM at the moment, which the goal of that project is to provide um, a service that can comprehend multiple different types, including older ones that are still valuable and and relevant, such as TPMs, but also including DICE and integrating AMD, integrating CCA. Um, I don't believe they have a TDX plugin at the moment. So um, I think more likely from the attestation perspective, that's the type of thing where you're going to have um, a trust, uh, a, a aggregated trust in one space that, that goes to the external ones just because of the different formats. 
Thank you. All right. Well, thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.